I'm Georgina, Head of the Centre here at Qualified Education and in this video I'm going to guide you through how to log in and use your ePortfolio. So your ePortfolio is called eCordia and the first thing that we need to do is find the web page and log in. So I'm going to type into my box here www.ecordia.co.uk and I'm going to go over to the right hand side and click login and what that will do for you is bring up another page it's just worth remembering this um, because when you start closing things down at the end you'll find that you've got two pages open okay so you should have been emailed your um, username and your password so I'm just going to type mine in now And the first time that you log in, you're going to be asked to accept the terms and conditions of use. So we'll just have a read through them, check that they're all okay. And when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to click accept. If you don't accept them, you won't be allowed access to your ePortfolio. So once I've accepted the terms and conditions, I'm going to be asked to change my password. So just change it to something memorable, something that you can remember. Um, so I'm going to type in my current password, which is the default one. Everyone's will be 1234. That's our default password. But I'm now going to change it to something a little bit more memorable. If you do forget your password, we are able to um, change it back. To the default password and we do get notification that you've been locked out but please try and remember it okay so i'm going to click here on to change password it's telling me i've been successful so i'm going to click ok and it's taken me to my skill scan so your skill scan is a way that we as a centre can see what kind of experience what kind of knowledge you've got before you start the course You'll have been sent a skills scan in your welcome email and on this you'll have noted that you've got the units, you've got the learning outcomes and then you've been asked um, if you, what knowledge, skills and experience you've got to prove that you know about it or where you're going to get that knowledge from. Now this wasn't intended to be a trick document or anything like that. We do understand that it's quite difficult to complete. What we want here, there's no right or wrong. We just want a guide as to where you are. Are you a complete beginner or have you been a teaching assistant or working in the sector for a really long time? You've got lots of experience and it just gives your assessor an idea of where you're starting from. So what we're going to do now, using the document that you've been given as a guide, because that gives you a little bit more information, we're going to look at each of the units and we're going to see whether you do them never, sometimes, often or always. So the first thing I'm going to check is that I'm doing the right qualification. So here I can see I've got my name, test practice, very catchy. Um, the course that I'm on is the Level 3 Diploma in Specialist Support for Teaching and Learning in Schools. Obviously check this is the right one for you. I'm going to go down and look at my qualifications now. So I'm looking at my units. Here are my mandatory units. So I've got 301, 302, 303 and I'm just going to go through. I'm quite experienced in schools. So I'm just going to click these radio buttons. Do all of these things scrolling down just making sure I've got them all so I do all these things all the time and I'm not going to worry about these two boxes next to them because I'll have completed those in the word document that was sent to me if you haven't done this already you may need to do it Okay, so the next section here, and this might not apply to you if you're doing an award course or if you've got a course that doesn't involve any optional units, but here I've got a huge list, because there are a lot of optional units in the diploma, of all these different optional units. And again, I'm just having a look at them. The Word document describes this in a bit more detail and tells you how many credits you need, so make sure you're just referring to that at this point. And at this stage, I've chosen 
literacy development, numeracy development, and I'm also going to do, I am going to do promote the well-being and resilience of children and young people. I can change these at a later date. I can't change the top ones because they're mandatory units, but these optional units, I'm saying that I'm doing them now, but if, for example, my role changes later in the year or I change schools or something happens, I can change these quite easily to fit in with what I do. So I'm going to scroll through these. I'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom. You can see that there are a lot of optional units here. You don't have to go through and click them all, just the ones that you're considering doing. And then I'm going to click continue. which now takes me to another page. So again, I'm just doing a couple of checks, still on the right qualification, still doing the level three diploma. I'm just checking my target start date, which is today, and my target end date. You'll have been told this um, in your welcome email. And then I'm going through and I'm just checking that these have been selected. I'm also having a look, just making sure that my assessor's name is correct. And you'll see as I go down now into my optional units, that I'm just going to select the ones that I chose and the other one was resilience. Okay, so I've ticked all the units that I'm going to choose and then I'm going to scroll all the way down through the next section, we don't need to worry about our initial assessment. We've got some more details about our skills scan, but we just need to keep going down at this stage, right down to the bottom. And I'm going to click save. Okay, so this is something that might happen with a few of you. At this stage, you might get a warning. My warning here is that I haven't selected enough credits. So for my level three diploma, it's telling me that I require 44 units, but I've only selected 42. So if at this point you didn't decide on your optional units and you haven't chosen the 12 credits or however many is required for your qualification, you will get a warning at this stage. It doesn't mean anything. It's just telling you that if you were just to stick with that, then you wouldn't have enough and you wouldn't get the diploma at the end. Um, but I know that. I'm aware that I only chose 10 credits rather than 12. So I'm just going to click save and continue. So it's now just doing another check with me, um, seeing if I've changed any of my units. At this stage, yes, I've changed them all because I've added some extra ones. So it's just telling me that if yes, the system is going to update my progress. If you do this halfway through your qualification, um, so if, for example, you change your optional units halfway through, it'll just ask you. It's just checking again to see if you've changed anything or if you're doing something, if you did something you didn't mean to do. So in my case, I'm going to click yes. And it's updating my progress. From now on, when I log in, this will be where I'm taken to straight away. My portfolio is now live, which means that my assessor can start giving me the units that I need to complete and I can make a start on my qualification. OK, so that is your first time login. Um, there are a few more videos that are going to tell you how to do things now further down the line, how to upload your work, how to accept plans. So please have a look at some of the other videos and just make sure that you understand what you're doing with your portfolio.